What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and apparently Halo Infinite has now changed forever. Ever since we've been sticking to CU updates rather than seasons, Halo fans have been standing by awaiting for any sort of update to be added to Halo Infinite. And I mean, it sort of feels like 3 for 3 kind of moved on from this game, and any update gives us fans hope that we might see some life in this game, or at least for another year. And with mid-March finally here, 3 for 3 announced their CU 31. Wait, wait, wait a sec, we had CU 29 legit maybe two months ago. I, I think we skipped the number. But with this update officially released, I have to say, it's pretty good. Now, there are some things that are concerning, as well as some aspects that are straight up missing. But with that being the case, does Halo Infinite deliver an update that brings fans back to the game? Did they finally fix desync? Let's finally get good at the sniper, spawn into some classic maps, and jump right into this. I need to be real with you. Desync has essentially been fixed. It has only been a few days since the update was released, but I haven't had much lag so far, which is definitely a positive. Before this update, enemies felt like they were from the movie Wanted, basically curving the bullet and shooting me around a corner. And bullet registration just feels perfect now. Imagine the fact that we've literally been having this problem since day one of the game, and now two plus years later, it's finally fixed, baby. The bullets feel crisp. And honestly, I've been on point with my accuracy, making me feel like a Chad when I start stringing together kills. The overall feel of the game is the best it's ever been. And with this new update, I have to admit, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for this, this is probably the best feeling Halo game I've ever played. Say what? I've always touted Halo Infinite's ability to take the formula from Halo 3 and make an updated version of it. But I feel like with this networking fix, it sort of feels amazing to play games now. And I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate online, but honestly, I've seen this from so many content creators, as well as just consistently all agree that Halo Infinite's gameplay wise has done a great job with how it feels. 3 for 3 also added seven squad battle maps into the mix, which honestly was way more than I expected. Now, I understand these are forge based maps, which only proves my point further that Forge literally saved this game from collapsing years ago. But they all are pretty great additions. We have five remade maps from previous Halo games in Perdition, Timberland Evolved, Rendezvous, Dire, and Harvest. All remakes fit very well with the squad battle feel of a classic big team battle format. Timberland Evolved is probably the closest feel to the original. A whole lot of warthogs and snipers, which brings me back. I feel like my favorite has to be Rendezvous since it reminds me quite a lot of Halo ODST. And the fact that there's so many ways to find cover and corridors to get the drop on your enemy is just great. Looks like I'm jumping back into Halo 3. Perdition was a recreation of a Halo 4 map. I like the aesthetic of it itself. It's essentially a weapon refinery, but it just fits perfectly with Slayer. I do wish they included more vehicles, but not a bad map. Dire was one of my favorite Halo Reach maps back in the day, so I was happy to see that they brought it back. The grassy terrain with a mix of Forerunner structures fits perfectly together. My only criticism though is that it doesn't really have a lot of big vehicles for combat. In the original, each side started with a Banshee and a Scorpion tank. Now I, I understand the Scorpions are beefcakes and may be too powerful for a Slayer match, but maybe you could just add a Wraith instead? I feel like the main reason why this map does not include vehicles to that stature is mainly because the kill limit would probably end quicker since it's only set to 75 rather than what it used to be at 100. Maybe if they were to switch it back, we could see more vehicles added to these types of maps. And the very last one is Harvest, which is a recreation of a Halo 4 map. So this map is probably the most basic of all the recreations since it's just one extended linear path with relatively limited ways to traverse. So the problem people could face is that if you're constantly fighting in the same spots over and over because there's not really much place to run, it could be a problem. If someone picks up a sniper rifle, they could literally clean everybody on one side completely since there's limited spots for cover. This map does come off as unique, but just feel like they could have included some other map instead of this one. But overall, the new Forge creations are pretty much on point. They also included two maps that are being repurposed to be added into the playlist, which are Refuge and Behemoth. Refuge is a legendary map, so I wasn't surprised that they would add this to Squad Battle since it originally was made for an 8v8. And somehow, someway, Behemoth returns to another playlist. Now, I know a lot of people despise this map like it stole your girlfriend, but it's not as bad as everyone says. I think it fits better as a Squad Battle map rather than a 4v4, since it's just so damn big. I would rather see more vehicles added to this, at least to change up the feel, but it's just kind of average. There are some weapon tuning adjustments as well that were added to this update, 
fixing specific guns, and some of them were much needed. The gravity hammer was completely unstoppable for this update. It was almost like you're setting off an atom bomb every time you're swinging it towards someone in any sort of direction. But they lowered the range of its impact and making it stronger so it could just straight up launch vehicles. The commando has been super boosted after this update, increasing the accuracy with diminishing effect of bloom on it overall. So dudes like XLR8 can absolutely destroy you at any range, which could be scary. Some small adjustments to other weapons like the Bandit and Bandit Evo just make you reload slightly faster, so nothing too crazy. The Plaza Pistol still doesn't really have much use still in this game, unlike what it used to be in Halo 5, which I'm honestly okay with. Maybe you could give it a boost in damaging vehicles to give it some sort of a use, because honestly, it's actually pretty easy to avoid, and I feel like it's just losing its overall importance. I have to say, one of the most annoying things about this update is either the failure to capitalize on easy opportunities or the outright failure to include aspects that are essential to a live service game. One of the first thoughts in my mind is the inability to add playlists that seemingly are ready to be added into the game. I remember several months ago that we were told that VIP, which was a very sought after game mode, was nearly ready to go. I'm pretty sure that was back all the way in season three. And because 3 for 3 was trying to prioritize other game modes that had moved that mode to the side for the time being, just to add some little additions and get it ready for its official release. Well, guess what guys, it's been roughly a year since that last update. And I don't know about you, but I don't see no VIP anywhere. I mean, don't get me wrong, seasons three, four, and five were amazing with what they added, but the goal of content updates is to keep players around and in some cases return to the game. But why would they do that if you're not providing any sort of playlist to give them that incentive? I'll give you a perfect example. So in this update, three for three announced that now in Forge, you can create your own firefight modes since they remove the automatic King of the Hill aspect to it. That, that's awesome. So, so you're telling me that we actually have a classic firefight mode? Wrong! So you're telling me they want us to make it ourselves and then they'll add it to the rotation? I mean, if you set up Forge to be able to do this, you should have already let Forges have access to this feature and just have them work on it behind the scenes so that it's ready for its official release. Or maybe, I, I don't know, just, just do it yourself. It's a crazy idea, but it's sort of frustrating because normally I'd be praising 343 for, for giving us the ability to do this, but it's sort of like you're coming off as a lazy ass at this point. It's just kind of sad. Of the last major shockers that most fans have been very cautious of was the addition of easy anti-cheat. Now, for those of you who don't know, easy anti-cheat is, you guessed it, a cheating prevention software that can be used to basically detect whether using foreign files while playing to stop cheats like wall hacking or aimbot. Halo Infinite was previously using the Arbiter anti-cheat, which was an in-house program made by 343. Well, if Easy Anti-Cheat is a program that has been used by other gaming devs, then why is it a big deal if Infinite switches their software? The problem is with recent events with the Apex Pro Tournament, where hackers straight up embedded different cheats for the pro competitors, making them wall hack and auto aim bot, halting all the games at in a standstill. The fear is that this could happen in Halo Infinite. And on top of that, MCC has been plagued with hackers for probably a more than a year. My fear is that I might start seeing Spartans flying in Halo Infinite when they shouldn't be able to. Now, the reason to do this, it was mainly because it's easily updatable and there are more people with experience using this system. But the problem is that it has proven to suck ass and we could easily see the same problems enter into Halo Infinite. If I'm getting blasted and lose a firefight, then that, that's fine. But I'd rather not get teabagged by a floating Spartan. The Halo CU31 update was a pleasant surprise. I'm always happy to see when we give some love to bigger modes like Big Team Battle and Squad Battle because they represent the social experience that Halo was always about. The last two major updates, we've gotten so many additional maps to increase the various ways to play. Showing off the talent of the Forge community just constantly gives me a reminder that this game would suck without them. The networking update is phenomenal and it only makes me love the gameplay even more. It actually feels like a near perfect experience in the pure gunplay of the game. But as much as I can rave about the great aspects, there are still issues with the lack of real additions that make fans want to come back for more. With leaks that guns like the double barrel shotgun or vehicles like the Falcon are nearly 90% done but are put on hold due to a lack of resources, it only hurts my balls knowing how much better this game would be if 3 for 3 didn't screw up the entry point at its release. Missing playlists or the lack of releasing ones completed does sour the update overall, but I still love that we are getting maps to play from the past. Oh, and, and by the way, 3 for 3, you need to fix your messaging department. I think half the devs understand what CU we're currently on, while the others definitely don't. But what do you think about the CU31 update? 
Do you like this new desync fix? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.